Hello everyone, welcome back to GGN. This is part two for this news bulletin today, October 9th, 2012. This first article I have up is U.S. President Barack Obama, a true friend of Israel, says analysts. We talked about Syria in this last video, and now we'll go into Iran. It says a prominent analyst says Barack Obama has adopted an unwavering pro-Israeli policy despite some disagreements between the Prime Minister and the President. Actually, Obama has increased U.S. military aid to Israel. He's giving Israel so-called missile defense systems. He's been a real friend of Israel in the past and a real friend of people like Israeli Minister Barack, who, come, who comes out and says that Obama is a great friend of Israel. But what about our boy Mitt, right? It says here, meet the donors who likely attended Romney's Florida fundraiser letter i'm not sure if that's how you pronounce it but letter and some other donors there have funded jewish causes as well as politicians who espouse right-wing zionism and islamophobia jim besser of jewish week said while jewish voting isn't very israeli focused jewish campaigning giving is and especially the mega giving that is playing a bigger role than ever in the election of 2012 and finishing it up as salon's alex seitz wald has reported has Adam Hasner, chairman of the Jewish Americans for Romney Coalition, uh, pals around with Pamela Geller. And as Mondo Weiss has reported, Hasner, a chairman of the this uh, coalition for Romney, is a right-wing Zionist and believer in greater Israel. The Jews' legal, religious, historical, and moral rights to the land are superior to those of the Palestinian Arabs, Hasner wrote in September 2011. And then there's this video. I look for other articles. I couldn't find them. Romney's English roots surprise cousins left behind. A world away from the quarters of the power in the satanic hub of Washington, D.C., uh, one English family are following the U.S. presidential election more closely than most. They've recently found out that their distant relatives of the Republican hopeful, Mitt Romney, and uh, that's no surprise, right, as far as uh, British roots go, because this guy, too, had British roots. Barack Obama's royal roots has connections in high places like the British royal family. So they always keep it in the family, don't they, in the bloodlines. Once again, proving that, uh, you know, whoever they put up in front of you is going to be uh, on board with this uh, system, no matter how much it seems like it's uh, like they're representing you to make things uh, better. Pro-Israeli group puts up an anti-Islam ad in U.S. Capitol. In any war between the civilized man and the savage, Support the civilized man, support Israel, and defeat jihad. A pro-Israeli group has again forced the installation of the anti-Islam publicity advertisements in D.C. Metro, citing free speech after displaying them in the New York and San Francisco public transportation systems. They said they were going to Chicago. I haven't seen them in the news yet, but so now they are in D.C. So, but uh, like like I said before, in California, you can't even criticize. Um, uh, the, uh, Israel as far as the Palestinian occupation goes, right? Uh, because if you do, you'll be called anti-Semite. They've actually um, are pushing that law and that bill in California. So, so it's, again, double standards. Uh, radicalism prompts warnings in France. Jewish and Muslim leaders here warned on Monday of rising anti-Semitism among young Muslims two days after the police arrested 11 men and fatally shot one in raids in a handful of cities aimed at young, radical French Muslims. So this is interesting, right? This is to try to break through the programming uh, that they put out there. The rising anti-Semitism among young Muslims. Now, why would they be so anti-Semitic, right? Uh, well, in France, actually, there's Islamophobia, and it's being probed. So a recent survey conducted by the Islamic Human Rights Commission show that over 80% of Muslims in France have heard offensive jokes being made uh, about Islam or Muslims and have heard Islamophobic comments being made by politicians. I've heard it here in the United States, just around, uh, you know, you could hear people talking about it. So they've been doing a good job recently with Islamophobia uh, here in the U.S. because it's taken hold with the neocons, uh, people that consider themselves just moderate conservatives. They're usually neocons that are, are Zionists, really, and they don't even know it, right? Uh, just to tie this in with that recent news, because I don't know if I'll ever find a connection like that again, where I covered that article about uh, in Sweden where you had uh, this Jewish group that was going to uh, uh, basically walk with their uh, yarmulkes, those little hats that they wear, and the mayor of the city of Malmo in Sweden said, well, you know, there was a ban or something like that from them doing that because they said, well, you're, gonna, you're just going to incite violence and stuff like that, so they did it. 
right? They wanted to go out there and show their force, right, in another country, another culture. And um, unfortunately, what happened was there was an explosion just three days later, and uh, an explosion and basically blew some stuff up. I don't think anyone was injured, but that was the result of the Muslims living in that country in Sweden. And those uh, Jews that were walking around, they probably weren't even Zionists. But then again, like I said, if they're out there and pushing their culture in another country, when they know it's going to incite violence, it's uh, usually going to play into the hands of the Zionists, right? So they're kind of being used. We must take the measure of this type of ideology, says uh, this head of a major Jewish organization in France. I say that radical Islamicism is Nazi ideology. And of course, Zionism is synonymous also with uh, Nazism as well, national Zionist, right? So there you go, buddy. And of course, the whole anti-Semitism thing, I've seen people correct me that, uh, uh, you know, as far as anti-Semites, uh, Arabs are Semites, right? Is that correct? And if that's if that's true, then why why would they be against themselves? So anyways, U.S.-Israel considering joint surgical strike on Iran's nuclear facilities. Oh, I wonder if that means a drone strike. Remember they were saying that drone strikes are surgical, right? That's how precise they are, that they, when they go and they kill somebody, they can kill 20 other innocent bystanders. That's what they mean by surgical, like in Pakistan and that in Afghanistan. Former Clinton regime official David Rothkopf writes in foreign policy that attack, which he says could not be carried out by Israel alone, would only take a few hours and would neutralize Republican criticism. That Obama can get it done, too. It's interesting because I just uh, read uh, an article recently where it was saying that Obama was more uh, neocon or, quote, yeah, neoconservative, more to the right than, uh, than his counterpart, Romney. So, U.S. can ill afford Israeli war on Iran, says Americans. A survey conducted by a U.S. university has revealed that the majority of Americans believe a potential Israeli attack against Iran will have dire economic and strategic consequences for the U.S. Remember Turkey? We're just talking about Turkey, right? And about how they're they're escalating this incursion uh, to uh, basically be a, used, like I said before, they're being used by the Zionists too. Turkey is. And um, playing a dangerous game uh, and basically being used by NATO. And of course, these think tanks like the Brookings Institute that write these reports and these globalists that want this regime change for uh, uh, basically financial reasons is going to get they're going to stab themselves in the foot uh, and it's going to have it's going to come down to Kurdistan and the instability in that area between Iraq and that but the Turks own people don't even support it they were out there protesting the minute that they said that they were that they declared or they wrote a bill and said that uh, they basically made it legal to initiate military force inside the Syrian border just last week and they protested it so it doesn't really matter whether the people want it uh, we all live in dictatorships so it doesn't really matter so but either way the Iranian foreign minister says if Israel wanted to attack it would have happened a long time ago he downplays international sanctions on his country and he says protests in Iran he says we can count on the patience of our people Next stop, meat becomes a luxury good in Iran as inflation continues. Goes on and it says that economic sanctions against Iran are really beginning to bite now as hyperinflation has struck its currency, causing the real to lose more than half of its value against the dollar in the past couple of weeks. Falling currency is putting pressure on the civilians, which had led to street protests and the riots. Of course, that's the purpose, right? Um, you know, yeah, the Germans uh, bombed. Uh, the UK, but the UK and the US combined bombed the living shit out of Germany um, and France and stuff like that. They bombed the hell out of the civilians is what they did. They just bombed them and bombed them. And you know whether it was Germany, whether it was Germany or whether it was the uh, uh, US and UK alliance, uh, they just bombed the hell out of each other's civilians. And that was the point to demoralize them. This week, the riot police had to fire tear gas at crowds of protesters, and now hundreds of security personnel roam the streets to try and deter any more campaigns. Milk rose by 9% yesterday. It goes on, it says a butcher from northwest Tehran says that chicken, once a staple of Iranian meals, has doubled in price since last year. In fact, meat has become so expensive that it's generally considered a luxury good now. Most of my customers just look at the products behind the window and pass, he said. I see them going to the next store, which is bakery, to feed their families with bread. And there is no hyperflation in Iran. The real story is much more interesting. It says, 
So contrary to the reports, the Western sanctions are actually failing, failing miserably Sorry to meet their objectives, and the regime collapse, or even coming short of that, another popular uprising reminiscent of 2009 seems further away from Iran than ever. Meanwhile, the Iran administration is using the current sanctions imposed against its West as a weapon to weaken its own fiercest domestic threat, the educated, relatively pro-Western Iranian constituency that com compromises the middle class. In this way, the economic warfare that the West has waged against Iran to weaken the regime is actually amplifying the regime's control. Of course, this is Path to Persia, again written by our buddies at Brookings Institute, policy think tanks. I was joking about it to my family this week about how they sit... You know, trying to explain how this system really works that you don't, you know, about voting doesn't count. People know that, that voting doesn't count. But they don't but they don't see how, like I was saying, they can they can look at it, but then all of a sudden the, the, the wheels kind of go off, right, unhinged and stuff because it's like you got a, you got to picture a big, you know, fancy table uh, with all of these globalists and all these politicians that are um, uh, members of, of uh, like, Council on Foreign Relations and all that sitting around drinking... Uh, or, you know, artesian bottle of water and that, and um, determining your future and how to kill people the fastest way and how to take over sovereign nations uh, the, the fastest, most efficient way as possible. With serious and PowerPoint presentations, everything. And then you, when you see, you see stuff in the mainstream media about it, it's just pure, I mean, when you see it now, it's just it's so obvious and such garbage that people eat up. And they don't know that it's coming from a think tank, a private think tank of a bunch of businessmen. You know, and that's why when you met us, when you when you say stuff about Gaddafi, well, you know, Gaddafi was introducing a currency. That's why they really went in there, kind of like with Saddam, with uh, you know, backing his oil with euro. Oh, they were, you know, Gaddafi was an asshole. Or Assad's Assad's a he's a he's a brutal dictator. He's killing his own people, right? That's all they see. So with this, uh, back to this article, as far as it not being hyperinflation. It goes on and says that uh, what's being confused is hyperinflation by outside observers and the press right now is actually the mechanism through which Iranian leaders are tightening their grip on Iranian society. And recently, the Iranian currency fell drastically against the U.S. dollar. It says here, the fact is, though, that U.S. dollars aren't really an essential medium of exchange in the Iranian economy and Iran still mains, maintains control over its official exchange rate. It says uh, the Iranian administration, and I love doing that too because they call it the regime and call it the Obama regime, thus able to channel the most pain of the sanctions in whatever direction it chooses while avoiding any of the ramifications of sanctions itself. Now, I'm not for like, you know, all these central banks and stuff like that, but countries that have their own central banks, um, you know, they're also, it kind of makes them a target even more. Interesting, Virginia Tech economist, oh, in Brookings Institute fellow. He's a fellow and an expertise in the Middle East. And he told Business Insider that what the Iranian government is trying to do is make sure that the targeting of the sanctions goes to the rich so that Iran's middle class, not the lower class, becomes the victim of the Western sanctions. It says that the important lower classes represent a significant amount of voters are shielded from the devaluation of the dollar because their day-to-day -day lives don't even involve dollars. The currency is worthwhile for poor people. They go to work, get their daily wage, go to buy chicken and bread, and they get the same that they got the day before. Yeah, one of the reasons why the globalists don't like sovereign nations that have a central government, a central uh, bank, is what? Is because they can do what the Federal Reserve System and the European Central Bank does. They just print out limit, limitless amounts of cash. So, but to give you some background, it says the Iranian government, up until the sanctions from the West came into effect in July, was bringing in billions of U.S. dollars by selling oil to Western nations. The sanctions quashed Iranian oil exports to the West and frozen Iran out of the international financial system, which have stemmed the flow of dollars into the country. But the central bank has whatever reserves it has accumulated from prior oil sales that it hasn't pumped into the economy. What this means is that Iran can effectively value the real at whatever it wants against the dollar, at least as long as it still has dollars. In essence, this system allows the government to subsidize the prices on certain critical items like food, keeping them relatively affordable for politically important lower classes. We have plunge of Iran's currency slows as the real appears to be holding at a rebound level from weekend, or they just adjusted it, right? So Iran's currency, uh, the 40% drop of it against the U.S. dollar last week was blamed on the government's mismanagement. But we know what it was, right? They just adjusted it. Speaking of, so kind of like Venezuela, 
Iran says it blocked a cyber attack on oil platforms. Thank you.